Welcome to the part 3 of the 1 vs 2 challenge between the two big German streamers Mara and Maurice vs the one, the only, Beyond Standards aka Shanks aka me. To make this more challenging we're gonna be playing on the map Ker Andros this time, because you know last time we played on the map Vault, which was kinda easy for me to snowball my lead into a quick victory because of the many many settlements and outposts, but this one is gonna be at least 2 times 3 times harder. And to make it even more harder, I will be picking Rohan Faction because whenever I pick random, I will get to play Isengard. Let's do this, girls and boys. Okay, so wish me luck, because I am still 2 versus 1. Master the Rohirrim, sons of Rohan. Okay, so at the beginning of the game, we need to kind of play it slowish, you know. Hopefully, we will be able to protect the settlements outside because we need money. And also, I will try my best to win this game without, you know, recruiting horses. So I'm not going to build up a stable. I will actually recruit heroes and elves, okay? That's the plan for this game. The reason is simple, because the smaller the map is, the better are archers. Remember, the bigger the map is, because you need mobility on big maps and strength and force in small maps. And actually, infantry is stronger in an all-out potential versus cavalry. I mean, this map is not too small, but it's also not too big, so I think you can go both. You know, you can go horses, but also archers. But I will go for archers in the skin. Okay, so, you know, he's pressuring me. Should not be able to protect this. Okay, so Hobbit Micro is very important, you know. Move, shoot, move, shoot, so we can cancel the auto attack animation. I'm gonna actually build like full farms inside the castle and then recruit Legolas first, okay? So let's leave, give Legolas the chance to show his quality. Because I've seen people complaining about that all the time that Legolas is weak, and I will prove you guys wrong by going crazy with the Prince of the Mirkwood Elves. So my Hobbit was able to get cloaked, and it means Gondor can't capture the settlement. Hobbit is actually very impactful early, uh, at the early stages of the game. Even later on, he's a very cheap scout. You can cloak him and get vision. Look, my workers, I mean peasants, are repairing like crazy. I'm gonna repair even more. Watch this, boys. Watch this. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, more farms. Look them go. Look the repairing. Oh my god. Holy guacamole. <laughs> It's gonna be tilting to deal like, with that. Because look, the we have two battalions of peasants repairing all the time, you know? And it's all about putting pressure, boys. We have in total three farms outside, actually four farms outside, it's amazing. We will have now the farm number five on the field, you know? That's gonna be <laughs> absolutely crazy. And Rohan needs that though, because Rohan is a faction that has only 7 available spots inside the castle, so you need map control with Rohan with more than with any other faction in the game. Okay, so we can put them inside the towers, um, they won't be shooting of course, but it's about vision control, you know? So we get to see more from the map. Which is which is super underrated too. I think more vision control is gonna give you more preparation time. You will see the enemy units coming before they can get to you, and that's gonna give you the chance to react to that a bit faster. And time is very important. So it's a very delayed stable from the Gondor. He has only blacksmiths inside the beast, and he has, I believe, zero farms outside. It means he needs to pay the full price for the Knights of Gondor. He needs to pay 800 for one single battalion, which is quite expensive, you know. And in the meantime, we have almost the money for Legolas. We need 2,700 to recruit him. Oh, I, yeah, we can't get the settlement. It's protected by the troller. But now, it's time, boys, to recruit him. And afterwards, I want to also, gi also get Gimli, you know? I want to go Legolas, Gimli. Let's go for the three hunters, okay? Legolas, Gimli, and Aragorn. But I'm going to also make, you know, first of all, archer range, get elves... Get Gimli next and Aragorn last. Aragorn is very important too because of the leadership he can provide to the elves. And also remember in the patch 2.22 Legolas also has leadership which is only and unique 
for the Alvin uh, unit. So he will give them a bit more damage and also combat experience, which is like a bit more support for the elves. They were kind of underrated in the previous purchase. The 2.22 is trying to make them more useful and more playable. Not even close, VV! Okay, so <laughs> let's look to Hobbit. Nice. Okay, so I mean, yeah, we should be able to reclaim this. The tower is doing good. Towers are actually very good against units without upgrades or leadership, you know? And my Legolas is gonna get level 3 from this. And we can creep even more. This map actually has like lots of wargs and trolls. And trolls are very tough to be creeped by any normal hero. You need an archer hero or Boromir. And, uh, you know, Boromir can do this also quite easily because Boromir is able to knock them down on the ground all the time. But a hero like Theorin or Eoma can't creep a troll solo. You see, my peasants are actually quite annoying. <laughs> they are referring like crazy. So the problem is Rohan, the opposite Rohan player, is actually quite rich. He haven't touched his eco at all. But I'm pretty certain that this Gondor right next to us is actually very poor. Level 3 unlocked. We need level 4 for the train archers and level 5 for the leadership. But Legoras is a hero. The more levels you have, the harder you will hit. And level 7 gives you the chance to single, as a, to solo kill any hero in the game. So you, you catch Gamma with the arrow wind, he dies through heal. You catch Witch King, he will die too. So he has the highest DPS against unit. Let's bring Gimli. And I will show you guys, Gimli is also very strong actually, especially against horses. And remember, they are both going for horses, the one going for the Rohirrim, the other one going for the Knights of Gondor. And good thing is, our elves are actually a counter to the horses too, because when they draw the swords, the elves, they become immune to trample, and they also deal like a bit of a revenge damage. Now, the revenge damage, you can't compare this really with the revenge damage of a pikeman, but for an archer unit, that's kind of nutty. You know, the fact that you can't be trampled when using the swords, and that you even deal damage when they try to trample you, is kind of very strong. And I will show you guys. When he throws the X, watch this, okay? I'm gonna try to throw an X on a, on a knight. And my Legolas is almost level 5. It's even better. And you see my Hobbit is quite annoying. <laughs> you know, he can't reclaim this. Thank you so much for the follow. Appreciate it. Really means a lot. Okay, so... Take this. Bam. Watch this. Boom. Sun. You see the damage output? That's kind of crazy. And level 3 is such a massive power spike too. So level 3 and level 5. These are the two power spikes we are looking for when we're playing with Gimli. Because level 5 gives the chance to unlock the Slayer. And with Slayer, Gimli, a super slow hero, can outrun any hero on foot. Including Lourdes, Aragorn or Legolas. So you have the chase and catch potential. And you can out damage them almost all. There's also knockback chain. So when you use the Slayer, he can knock down the target on the ground. Which kind of makes him to a bully, you know. He can bully anyone. We are almost ready, boys. So afterwards, we can also claim the middle, the middle camp. And then, you know, I like the middle camp in this. It's like in the center of the map. And we have the chance to get back to the middle camp, to heal up, to recover a little bit. If also more leadership, fighting in the middle camp with the statues and stuff like this. And later on, you know, we can build statues, for example. The statue gives us the hero bonus. So the more statues we have, the cheaper our heroes are gonna become. And this way, we will get a chance to recruit Aragon, for example, a hero that normally costs 3,500, way cheaper. Okay, amazing. So, we are almost at the power spike we are looking for. Legolas will unlock the leadership for the elves. We have Theorin leadership now, 30% more damage and armor. And combine this with Legolas, we have more than 50% more damage. Combat experience, armor, 
And later on, we have also the chance to recruit Aragorn for even 50% more leadership damage. That means our elves will deal 100% more damage, which is amazing. Look this, look this. We have no chance. Watch this, watch this. Put Legolas behind Gimli. Micro is important. Let Gimli face tank this. Watch this. Look the Alvin. Look the heroes of Rohan. Now jump, 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 jump. Kill the battalion. Take this. Whole battalion is gone. Now the second one is also gonna go. Be gone. Watch this. Look, they are knocked on the ground. You see how impactful the leap attack is. Because they are knocked on the ground. They can't move. During all this time, our Legolas is shooting non-stop. Highest DPS in the game. Attack speed like crazy. Look this. Level 4 and level almost 6 Legolas. Holy. Okay, so we have now a bunch of elves on the field. Theodin only level 1, but it's okay. We won't mount him in this situation because he needs to be just slow. No, he needs to stay behind the elves. You want to always keep attention, pay attention to your heroes. Because when they die, you lose a lot of value in leadership. And boom, level up, 53 arches, amazing, get the middle camp, even better. And now, I will show you guys, you build statue, 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 you need, you need four of them to get the maximum foot, uh, hero bonus. And then, you can recruit Aragorn way, way cheaper. And what we're gonna do later on is we need to build up the end mood, because that's the only way we can siege our opponents with the mighty ends of the Fangon Forest. Okay, so um, more, more, more. One, two, three. Okay. I think we need three because we have another one at the outpost, so we should be good. I will show you guys. You can recruit Aragorn now way cheaper. Oh, you see? The knights. I mean, I think this Gondor is so poor, man. I actually feel like guilty. No, guilty. <laughs> I feel like so bad. <laughs> he's so poor. He's so poor. Dude. No. he's It's unplayable for him. He is so broke. <laughs> he needs more resources. And luckily, he's playing Gondor. Imagine he plays Rohan with seven, fact with seven spots, you know? But he has the stable uh, barracks well you know they have they have like he has like three spots which are not giving him any money it means he has only six resource buildings and that's just not enough it is not enough I sense evil may be near. i think rohan was playing too passive in this game because rohan is not under pressure i think rohan is super rich and should be doing a bit more but now we are able to recruit aragorn arton son and the next step is to, you know, build up the end mood and start sieging. Okay, so, dude, we are so strong at this point, right? We need also armory, though. You know, that's also what we need. We need heavy armor for the elves. We have, like, no upgrades. I rush the heroes first. Oh, oh, okay. Abort the mission. It's, I mean, she has also Aragorn, you know? Rohan is also very strong. Mara is strong. So we need to be careful. Look, um, they are coming once again. Okay. So go for the armory. I mean, the towers are not very tanky. I will restore hope to men. Dude, Legolas hurts, man. Legolas hurts, man. And two more battalions gone just like it. that. That you know, when you play against units with, with that, which are shooting or Legolas, for example, you need the night shields. You need it. You need some sort of extra resistances versus arrows, okay? When there is a Legolas who's almost level 7, you need that. Otherwise, your knights are gonna die like flies. Heavy armor first. I mean, we don't we don't need actually banner because we don't, you know, we don't need it. Because we can always level up with, the, with Legolas, so we don't need to spend money for this. But what we can eventually go for are blades and give blades to our elves. Oh, look, Rohan Tower can be attacked by archers. Gondor Tower can't. We don't deal too much damage to it, but it's gonna fall eventually. We have like crazy leadership bonuses there. Watch this. Look the damage output. Oh, I think they wanna fight now. Look, we're gonna swap to the sword now in the last second. 
And you see now we are becoming immune to trample, boys. He's healing up. They got, this guy can jump. Jump, 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 jump. Uh, he, could, he couldn't jump. We can turn and fight this. Let's kill the heroes first, okay? Let's kill Aragorn first. Slayer. Go ham on him. Look, Legolas get one shotted. Now Aragorn. Give me, give me, give me, Speedy Gonzalez. Look, knock him down on the ground. Where are you going, enemy Gimli? Where are you going? We killed everything. Oh, Gimli, you can't get away from this man. Theodim gets the last hit and gets level 4. I mean, now we have Glorious Charge, but unfortunately, we have no horses. We could go for the transition into that, but I think I'm not going to do this. I want to actually go for the end mood to, you know, to finish this game as soon as possible and jump into the next game. And I will try to play, like, each faction, like, Rohan one time, Gondor one time. Again, the plan is, the challenge is to play this. They challenge me. They said, like, we will eventually beat you. And if they can't beat me, we need to keep playing for weeks, months, or years. Maybe until the moment I will become a granddad, they will be able to beat me. Because I won't let this happen anytime soon. You know? Luckily, these two streamers, they are very kind people, super nice people, by the way. Mara and Maurice. Um, when you are German, you pro probably heard about them. Maurice is like in GameStar. And uh, Mara is also a very famous streamer. They also are very passionate about the BFME games, just like I am, just like you guys are. And maybe with their reach, we can get more people to play these games, you know? And that's what I'm hoping for. So more people are going to be seeing those games on the stream, on Twitch. And eventually more people are going to join the multiplayer scene. Thank you so much for the follow, appreciate it. And if you guys want to see more, make sure to follow me on my Twitch channel. I was not streaming for a long time, actually. But I'm planning to stream more frequently in the near future. Just like life is quite busy right now, boys, as I'm also not able to make many, many YouTube videos for you. But I will not forget about you, you know. The return is going to be very strong. So we're going to return very strong. And have lots of fun together. I mean, okay, you can take this farm, I don't mind. Now it's the time to build the end mood. And that's what this Rohan player should be doing, by the way. Go for the end mood and pressure my castle. That will, you know, that you see, the problem, guys, when you play this game, it's all about making a choice or making a move that forces your opponent to make a choice, okay? So, when you don't threaten my camp or castle, I can sit in the camp and you have nothing to gain out of this. So, you want to force me to defend either one, camp or castle. And the way you can do this, because I have walls, is through end mood when you play Rohan or trebuchet with the Gondor faction. When you don't do this... You have no win condition, okay? So, long story short, make a move that forces your opponent to make a choice. So, in either case, he will lose something, but he needs to choose which he would, which camp or castle he want to keep protected and which one he is willing to lose. Okay, so um, the siege... We will also recruit, of course, <laughs> three beard. You know, without three beard, there can't be victory. The last, the last march of the ends begins. Dude, look at this combo. You know, you see the elves and the the ends. You know, they have like a crazy friendship, right? Ends and what? They are like bros. You know, ends and elves. They are the oldest beings in Middle Earth. All right. I mean, look, I have zero protection and they don't pressure my camp, you know? The That's what you need to do. Like, farm for power points. Rise. Force me to move. Okay, if we can play it slow. We don't need to rush anything. We can just, you know, play it very, very slow. We lost the outpost, but it's okay. Not a big deal. Not a big deal at all. Bring them to the middle so they can recover up a little bit. We broke one part of the wall, but that's not enough. We need to break more parts of the wall, boys. We gotta keep moving, keep going, keep going. Money's not a pro problem. Oh, we don't have a post on gate. <laughs> My bad. All right, give them, you know, arrows and also the heavy armor. Recruit more, 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 more. And then we can use, like, macro is very important. Again, look what I'm doing. I'm sieging the castle. And while I'm doing this, I want to also use my other units to actually regain the map control. You know, again, I'm forcing them to defend this. And in the worst case scenario, I will gain map control while they try to defend. Like, you need to think about it, like, in real life, you know? <laughs> how, what, how can I get the most value out of the situation? 
I'm shooting from downtown, by the way. <laughs> Look at the range. I mean, by the way, guys, if you don't know the, the ends, especially with three build around them, have the longest range in the game. Way longer than actually trebuchet or catapults or ballista. And if you have three build around them, they have even more, more range. And they can shoot you. Look at the damage. They can shoot you out of the range. They have not even horseman shields, these horses. They need horseman shields. And ends are very tanky against knights. So you need, like, firepower or heroes like Faramir to deal damage to them. Your knights of Gondor, when they are level 1 or level 2, they deal, like, almost no damage. They are trees, after all. After all, you know? Trees are very tanky. Again, you know, we are destroying the outpost. Let's repair this, no problem. Okay, so this Rohan has to come to its ally very soon. <laughs> Otherwise, Gondor is going to be defeated. It's going to turn the 2v1 situation into a 1v1 situation. It's like an awkward map too, because they can't really support each other without going through the middle. I mean, they, they actually could, when you think about this, they have like the bottom right corner. This was under their control pretty much all the time. But they've like not sieged me at all during all this game, right? Maybe I should be playing Evil Faction when I think about it. So they have like more the rush or the pressure power. I mean, at the end of the day, you just need to build the end mood. That's it. Okay, we have Anduri Sword. We have five power points. Alvin Wood for the worst case scenario. We just destroyed the last outpost of Gondor. That means if the castle falls, so will the Gondor player. And take so much for the follow. Appreciate it. Means a lot. Okay, boys and girls. Now is the hour. Elves of Rohan, all you have taken, fulfill them all for Lord and Land. I mean, I could play it very slow with the ends and just keep shooting tower guards. They don't stand a chance, even if they look cool, but they have like literally no nothing to counter. I have no horses. There is no real need to build tower guards. You need rangers. You know, rangers are actually the best archers in the game. And when you play Rohan and Gondor, you can combine leaderships, right? We have Faramir Boromir for Gondor, for example, and Theodin Aragorn for Rohan, and you can get more leadership than I do. Which is the most important thing in the game. Look, you see? We play it slow, look, he's coming. Well, well, look. Yeah, one shot at Elma. What can the one horse do? I even missed the leap attack, doesn't matter. Oh, okay. I'm gonna just summon the out. Watch, watch this, watch this. Watch my trick, boys. Come, my friends. <laughs> Look, they don't. They attack me for my my Aragorn. That's a big mistake, by the way. Aragorn is too tanky. You wanna kill Theodin first, okay? That's what you wanna do. Because Aragorn, I have heal, I have Anduril, I have Blade Master, I have Attila, so he's good, he's good to go. Thanks so much for the follow. Appreciate it. Really means a lot. Okay, and we slaughtered them. Like, not even, we slaughtered them, okay? Look, there is a Legolas. Oh, there was a Legolas. Correction. Okay, my bad. Look how many ends we have. <laughs> Guys, let me introduce you to the brand new faction into the BFME 1. The Fangorn faction. <laughs> you have, uh, uh, you know, end swordmen. They don't have swords, but they are using their fists and their, you know, legs to attack and fight. And by the way, Aragorn from the Rohan player didn't even contribute or participate in this fight. It's like, nah, I'm out of this situation. And you see, during all this time, we get map control. I think Rohan was super rich, by the way, the green Rohan. But, you know, that's why you invest into heroes early game. Like, a very strong Legolas later on, Gimli level 6 or Legolas level 7 is just way too powerful. Like, heroes are very strong, but you need to invest into them at the beginning of the game so they can be popping off in the mid to lead game. A GG, well played. Elendil! Okay, guys, so that's gonna be the 1 0 of the day. Hopefully, you're gonna be playing more games. But I wanna see how much money we collected first. Oh, yeah, they leave the game victorious! I mean, that's the screen you're used to see on this channel. Okay, guys, see you in the next game. Peace out. Game number two. This time, I'm picking the Gondor faction, okay? So last time we played Rohan, we made Elves, and now we're going to be playing Gondor, and we're also going to make combos, okay? The plan is simple, we will recruit Farami Boromir, give them the chance to show their quality, get them levels. That's very important because Farami and Boromir, they don't ha have leadership unlocked from the beginning of the game. We need to get Farami from level 3 to level 5, and Boromir, his brother, has to reach level 4 for his leadership. 
and bottom is actually very impactful hero in the 2.22 patch uh, unlike in the previous versions he was very slow and weak and didn't have a good skilling now he has all of it he is very fast he has more dps and most importantly he has a good skilling into the late game and what is also very new in the patch 2.22 is the fact that fear and stun effects are also working on units or enemy units when they are level 2. Earlier in the previous patches of the EA games, you know, you could deny the stun or fear or screech from Nazgul, for example, or Cloud Break stun once you buy only banner on your units, which is kind of meh. When you think about how late those powers are, that when there is a Nazgul with only one ability and you can, you know, kind of counter all the screech from two Nazguls and the Witch King by only buying banner. Fortunately, that's changed in 2.22. Now it's more impactful. Okay, we should be able to win this fight, no problem. If um, we have heal, he didn't heal. So we should be good to go. And the problem is, we have only two starting units, so, you know, we can't produce anymore. I mean, we could if we wanted to. Oh, nice move. Look, they are learning, boys, you know? They are learning. Look, the Hobbit, though. In the tower, it's hitting like a truck. But we can micro this, no problem. Uh-oh, look, look this. Enough of this. <laughs> Enough of this. Dude, I can do this all day, boys. I can do this all day. You ain't catching me, soldiers of Gondor. Enough of this. <laughs> he gave up. He gave up. He gave up. Oh, look, they are actually garrisoning the towers. So I can't do this, you know? Okay. You know what? It's fine. It's fine. Okay, the plan is to recruit Faramir first. Okay, Faramir, because he's cheaper. <laughs> Sorry, Faramir, but that's just the fact. Not my, my, not my idea that you are cheaper. Because he's more affordable and also Faramir is actually a bit more useful and impactful when he comes out compared to Boromir. Why? Because he can get mounted. Faramir is actually a very versatile hero in this game. He can be mounted to join the Knights of Gondor. He can be on the foot with sword to deal more melee damage against structures. And he can also be a ranger sport with the bow. So he can mount, shoot and fight with sword. But I would say Boromir is better in terms of leadership in sport. Boromir is better against heroes though, because he has the warning arrow, which actually is great counter to heroes. Look, we're gonna get mounted and hopefully be able to defend this, but I don't think so. Our, if you don't know, guys, hobbits and also more heroes are actually having like a dodge chance against arrows. So that's why, for example, hobbit is gonna be a very good counter to Haradrim's, you know, spear throwers. Because he's able to dodge most of the most of the damage. And this way you can deal more damage. So get this mounted. Okay, we got inside the tower, no problem. And Faramir can also creep afterwards the troll there, top right side. The next hero we're gonna be recruiting, of course, is Boromir. Ganaf is too expensive to be recruited. Later on, we're gonna fill up the beast with blacksmiths exclusively to get the steel bonus to maximum. That's very important. Steel bonus making our upgrades cheaper. So your primary resource building are the blacksmiths when you play Gondor. And then we can make combos, right? So combos, what are we going to do? We're going to combine combos. is combining units with each other. So you can combine a soldier with an archer. They are, like, they are then only one battalion. The advantage of this one is they have more defensive bonuses. They are a bit more tanky. But also this... Oh my god. <laughs> I'm talking too much. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Perry Green took. And the, the thing is... The swordmen, the soldiers in the front, are gonna be able to absorb damage. For example, against horses, when you trample, they have like a slowing. Oh my god, I, I, I gotta stop talking, guys. I'm not paying attention to anything. I don't wanna lose this game. Okay, abort, retreat, we will lose a whole battalion, but it is so it is. Okay, so we have Boromir now. Guys, we have an amazing map control, by the way. We have, we have four farms outside, that's amazing, and we needed that. We needed that. And by the way, this Gondor started with barracks and spamming lots of soldiers. But it's not bad, by the way. It's not bad. But he didn't do anything with it, to be honest. So it's not worth it. Like, when you, like you need to think about this. When you go for the barracks opening, it will delay your mid-game powers back a bit. Because you invest money instead of making money, right? Obviously. And if you can't achieve something with that, it will benefit your opponent more than you. 
So now I have two heroes. Boromir is gonna get level four after creeping the Boromir. Boromir get level almost five. That's amazing. Boromir can creep this. Boromir doesn't have the highest DPS in the game, by the way, but he's able to knock down the target on the ground, which gives him the chance as one of the few melee heroes to creep a troll there. Lourdes can't do this, but he has no carnage because troll is gonna be winning the one v one. I mean, troll can kill solo kill Elma. He can solo kill Farami with sword. He can solo kill Theodin, Ilwin, all of these cheap heroes. But Boromir, he can't because Boromir is slapping him on the ground all the time, you know? Perfect. So, now we have a level 3 combo. Would you look at this? That's why saving units is so beneficial in this game. Okay, so. Boromir can do this. Let's combine them. Soldiers of Gondor in Gondor Archers. Nice. Okay. So the plan is simple. I mean, never change the running system. We will buy the middle camp. You know. And we are golden. We are good to go. But because our opponents are playing Gondor into Rohan, we will have to build Siege Works. We will have to build up the workshop. We will have to recruit Trebuchet. It's the only possible way we can Siege. Then we should be good to go. Combine. So we need three combos, three swordmen and three archers to get the barracks in archer range level two. It will give us a chance to recruit tower guards from the barracks and rangers from the archer range. Would you look at this? Beautiful. Okay, level five, Faramir, level four, Boromir. And Boromir, level five, is also a very massive power spike. The captain of Condor is so good. So good. Okay. Alright, boys. We are almost ready. We are almost ready. Slap the troll. Slap him. You see? Knocking them on the ground. Get the money, Faramir. Nice. Beautiful. Beautiful. Alright. Level 5. Okay. Uh oh. You wanna fight? I have the Horn of Gondor. Okay, we have three combos in leadership. Oh, okay. He purchased out. He captured the outpost. But we got the creep. Get the money. Get the money. Get the money. Get the money. Horn. No. Oh, he got the money though. <laughs> All right. It's it's okay. It's okay. We can slap them a little bit. Level six bottom here. Amazing. Level six. And level four, five, six, seven. These are the power spikes you are looking for. Level four unlocks leadership. Level five unlocks the horn. Level six unlocks the pillage. And level seven unlocks the four gone door ability, which gives more damage. And also, I believe, speed, if I'm not mistaken, to the nearby allied units. Gone door units. Okay, so we have three combos. In Faramir. Faramir. So they use Elvin Wood, right? So I'm pretty sure that Rohan doesn't have Elvin Wood yet. So it means I can place mine. Oh, okay. You know what? I can place my Elvin Wood on the spot right in front of the here, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So on the land, I have even more leadership. Okay, that's the plan. That's by the outpost. And I have like, I'm very strong. I have like double leadership, triple leadership. Land, Boromir, Faramir. I should, I should be able to fight this. And we have almost the power points for the Rohirrim too. Okay, that's the plan. Put them inside. Get a bit more money going. Look, they are not demolishing the towers. It's a big mistake. It's a big, big mistake. If you don't demolish the buildings in time, I will get more experience. Look, level 4 uh, battalion I have. Like, statues in the sentry towers are very important. Level 7. Okay. So now I can use it. I have also heal for the worst case scenario. Let's use the 4 Gondor. Summon the Rohirrim. And take over. Like, we are immune to damage at this point, right? They have, like, not enough. They have, like, no statue left anymore. If zero leadership bonuses, it's all about leadership, boys. Look, not even Knights of Gondor can deal any damage to me. Length plus Farami leadership gives me more than 80 person more armor. Plus heavy armor, obviously, you know? And yeah, that's a big investment they will be losing now. Over 2,000. <laughs> 3,000 actually. Now, filling up the base, uh, buying the middle costs 2,000, filling up the middle with towers, farms, and stuff like this will cost more than 1,000. So it's like 3,000 gone. That's why you should not buy a thing that you know you can't protect.
I mean, Mara needs to recruit more, Th you know, Theodin more often. Theodin is so good, actually. You know? And also, imagine if, like, Theodin statue in Gondor sending knights. So, you have, like, statue leadership, Theodin leadership, you could slaughter me. I have, like, zero tower guards. But they have, like, they need to be working a bit more together as a team, you know? Because even though I'm playing against two, they are not really grouping up a little bit, you know? Not even a single time. Until, until it's super late. Until they have to, because I'm sieging them. But they are only grouping for defense, never for attacking me, you know? That's something they need to be working on if they want to have a chance. Have a slight chance, a percentage chance <laughs> to beat me in this 1v2 challenge. And you know what time it is, okay? We have good eco. You know what time it is, boys, right? We need to build some statues, you know, for what? You know, you know, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to build three statues here. We have one at the outpost. So four statues that will make our Gandalf, yeah, you heard it right, normally cost 6,000, only cost 4,200. It will be 1,800 cheaper. It's pointless. Like, these towers are not going to be harming me anymore. I've, I'm, I mean, at this point, what they need are siege weapons. I'm being honest. Either they need to be outnumbering me, outnumbering me big time, or they need lots of siege, uh, siege weapons, like trebuchet. Because I have like too much leadership now at this point, in two high levels. Each are very important. You see what I'm doing in both the games, guys? I'm recruiting heroes early game and farming with them. K killing Troll Leia or Walk Leia and trying to actively put in the time to level them up. Which gives me the chance to have them where I want them to be, you know? Have leadership. You know what I mean? Like, that's the plan, right? Okay. Now, let's siege. Let's siege immediately and force them. Because they are not planning to attack me for whatever reason. They are actually playing super defensively. Like, guys, when you play this game, you need to have more than one plan. You want to have plan B, C, D, E, F, G, H. You know, you want to have, like, lots of plans. And it feels like they have, like, one plan. Okay, let's buy the middle camp and behold it. But if he can't hold it, what then? Don't know. <laughs> you know, it's doomed. That's why you want to hold it. <laughs> I, want to, I want to troll him a little bit. Let's troll him a little bit. <laughs> and it's funny. That's funny. Bo I love Boromir, dude. In 2.22, he is so good. I like him so much. Boromir is my most favorite hero, actually, in the 2.22. You know... He's not the strongest, but he's definitely so much better than he used to be. If you ask me who is the strongest hero in the game, the best hero in the game, I would say Lourdes. Hands down, Lourdes it is, boys. Cost efficient, fast, high damage, leadership, can shoot, can fight, can fight with sword. Has a counter, hero counter ability, the cripple. It is the nightmare of every Gandalf, every Saruman, every Aragorn. Okay, so it's time to recruit the Grey Pilgrim and turn him into the Gan of the Whites. I am Gan of the Whites, and I come back to you now at the turn of the tides. Look at my coming at, <laughs> at fifth day. Look, I mean, what day, guys? L listen to me. What day it was? Look at my coming at the fifth day. Look to the east, at dawn, you know? But which day? Uh, was it two days, three days? I'm not sure. Obviously, it's never late. <laughs> Dude, I'm such a nerd. I'm such a nerd. I'm sorry for this, but... I have so much fun in those games, you know? Because, it, I'm being honest, these games are not very challenging me too much, so I can talk and express myself. I can talk about stuff that what I, do, what I want to talk about. And I have still fun. And hopefully you guys will enjoy. I mean, they're improving a little bit, but again, their weakness is the lack of communication and lack of teamwork. So they need to work more as a team. I want them to win. I want people to improve. I don't want to be beating everybody. I like when the new generation is beating me, you know? No yeah, I mean, I like that people are advancing, improving, and getting better in the game because I am 32 years old. I don't know how many years I will be playing myself. So I need my son to grow up a bit more. He's seven months old now, my son. The second he gets, like, to walk, he gets to speak properly, I will teach him to play BFME. So he's gonna be replacing me in the near future. 
you will maybe your children hey guys imagine this that's gonna be a youtube channel that is based on generations okay maybe your children are gonna maybe you guys your responsibility listen to me okay your responsibility as a as a responsible parent is the second your son or girl or daughter is able to speak properly and walk i'm talking about an age like three four five max okay that's where you need to teach them how to play pfme and make them fall in love with the game so my, they can watch then my son in the future on this youtube channel that's our responsibility okay until ea games or any other company is coming up with a brand new battle for middle earth game okay boys it's time <laughs> we are destroying the white city oh now they are coming guys look the combo look the combo look the combo look the combo i'm coming they can't move boom sun on your face sorry i mean I, the green rohan is a girl actually man i'm sorry when you're watching this but i can't i just can't when when i see Ganna popping off like this i just can't and also big mistake from gondor to use the elven wood first the only time you use elven wood first is when your ally has another elven wood if she has elven wood then you can use it then i can cover this and your ally using it again so but if your ally doesn't have elven wood you use it i can counter it dude i got like so many power points by the way lot it's just like flex a little bit summon the eagles for him by the way this by the way this legolas is not surviving okay <laughs> i'm a servant of the secret fire <laughs> the wielder of the flame of anor dark arrow will not avail you <laughs> prince of mirkwood you shall not I will represent the <laughs> thank you so much for the follow appreciate it dude i had so much fun in this game guys if you also had fun watching this make sure to leave a like to this video and also subscribe for more videos like this in the future again the plan is to make this challenge until they can eventually beat me so make sure to subscribe to the channel to not miss when it's gonna happen okay or if it's gonna happen in either case you will not miss it when you subscribe to the channel and also i will of course play more games in the future and also you know multiplayer games single player games on this channel so most of the content like 90 percent of the content is going to be based on bfme gg well played guys i hope you enjoyed let's take a like a look into the money and skills and i will see you next time until then take care of yourself keep hitting like a track and as always Stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.